right so the, uh, last time dustin started talking about um like the relative solid theory and uh the relation to attic spaces and so uh i want to kind of continue with that um okay so i guess i want to talk about the relation between these basic objects that appear in Hoover theory that are called Hoover pairs. Uh, and the kind of basic objects that appear in all theory that are called uh, analytic rings. Uh, um, so, so my motivation. Uh, by now we've seen we've seen several examples of a pair of some um, light on entering A. A uh, puzzle notion of complete uh, condensed A module. So, uh, the first one we discussed was the integers and solid or should stress that it's one over z, uh, solid being grouped inside of all condenser being grouped. <clears throat> but then last time, just we discussed the example where you take the polynomial algebra of a z adjoint t. And then within all uh, condensed z adjoint t modules, um, well, you can somehow just take the ones that are complete in, in the sense of this one. So you can somehow amount to taking modules over this uh, polynomial algebra inside of as follows in the groups. <laughs> uh, but then Dustin argued that it's actually quite natural to uh, also isolate a stronger completeness condition giving the solid to your key modules. Um, which, when geometrically speaking, um, well, this corresponds maybe to some kind of fine line, or this corresponds to those units. <clears throat> and compared to all, I mean, in these cases, uh, the condensed thing was actually just discrete, but uh, this notion of completeness is still uh, interesting. You could also, I don't know, take I don't know, ZP or QP or whatever, and then take solid ZP modules. Or the QP for the QP module. Um, right. I mean, in those cases, these are actually just the ones that are where the underlying condensed being group is solid. Uh, there's no meaningful way to transcend this. Um, okay, so uh, the notion of analytic ring will somehow uh, exhibitize uh, this situation. Um, and uh, on the other hand, uh, right. um, yeah, on the other hand, if you learn the theory of static state, then, um, <clears throat> then you uh, run into this definition. I mean, the basic object there are these uh, Uber pairs. So let me recall what these are. Um, into Hoover, although Hoover, of course, use different names. Um, a Hoover ring is a topological ring. Um, let me also just call it A for now. Um, Uh, a that admits an open subring A zero and A um, 
<coughs> such that there exists some finitely generated ideal. And because now it's not clear what ideal means because if there are two rings in place and you create an ideal for I zero. Um, uh, such that A zero uh, has the I addict default. <clears throat> um, let me give examples in just a second. Let me just uh, uh, finish the definitions. Um, and then Hoover has notion of a ring of integral elements. This is an open in a Hoover ring H. Is an open and integrally closed subring. A plus uh, contained actually in the power bounded element. Oh. Um, maybe I will also report what they are in just a second. Um, and third, uh, Uber pair the pair well. A plus uh, of a Hoover range. A and the ring is simple. Okay, so so what are the examples to keep in mind? Um, let me first give some stupid example. Uh, any discrete ring is a Hoover ring. So in this case, you can take A0 to be A and CL0 to be 0. Uh, slightly less stupid. Um, but any of a ring that itself has is has the is an edit ring for finally generated UI. Uh, ring with the I edit quality. For some fancy generated idea of I. Over. So in this case, you take the stage A0 to be A and I to be I. <clears throat> um, and maybe, like, actually interesting is uh, when you have something like the Banach algebra. Um, so, I don't know, so if you have example QT is Hoover. Um, or any non academic field is Hoover. And in this case, you take A0 to be VP and I to be the ideal generated by P, which really is only an ideal in ZP and not in CP, of course. So basically, <clears throat> the idea is that Hoover rings are basically certain kinds of localizations or something like this uh, of, of such. A ring for some IR topology. Um, and so, also, whenever you have any kind of Banach algebra over QP or some other non Euclidean local field, 
there's also always a Hooper ring. And as A0, you can somehow take the unit ball in your Banach algebra. And as the idea, you can take the one that comes from a uniformizer and you know, like, you know. Um, uh, a remark is that uh, the completion of any Hoover rings against Hoover and we will generally only consider the key examples. So completion now in the classical sense, uh, like allow all converging proceed sequences. Yeah, so this is like. Cauchy sequences model than no sequences in A. Um, is it getting over? And in fact, if you if you start um, with uh, such so it's called ring of definition, so one which has the I the topology for some finely generated ideal I, uh, then it will be the case that the completion of A0 will be an open suffering of uh, the completion of A. And this is actually just the idea of completion of A0. <clears throat> and uh, at least when when one uses uh, Uber rings and so Uber pairs to do edit spaces, then <clears throat> The edit spaces associated with the Hoovering and with this completion are definitionally the same. Um, so in this sense, it's non-complete Hoovering set that most the technical role uh, in the whole series. So, uh, and we will only consider complete ones. So. From the following, whenever I say Google ring, Google pair, and so on, I always assume uh, that the underlying I mean, the Google ring is complete. All right. <clears throat> okay, and so uh, I mean, here is last time Dustin discussed some notions of uh, like topology mutual elements, power bonded elements, and so on. Uh, this can also be defined uh, in here. So, so again, the Hoover ring. Um, then <clears throat> you can define topologically important elements and power bonded elements in A. Um, so, this is the set of all F and A such that. F to the n goes to zero as n goes from chain, which once I assumed it's complete is really just a condition right now. Um, and these are all the elements such that the set of its powers uh, uh, is bounded. Um, it's actually equivalent to saying that it's contained in some such A0, some such ring of definition. Actually, a different way to think about this is that, uh, uh, first of all, I mean, you have these canonically defined, so these are kind of canonical objects, this A stir and A double stir. Um, but on the other hand, we also have these things uh, that appear in the definition that there is some 
uh, ring, so called ring of definition, uh, and some idea of definition of the same. And these will always be consist of power and elements, and the ideal thing will always consist of topological and important elements. Um, we have this. So, for example, an uh, example of QP, uh, there ZP is actually the A third, and the ideal generator P is actually the topology of that, right? Uh, so, in this case, these kind of inclusions are uh, uh, equalities. Um, of course, this can't in general be true because you could also, as ideal of definition here, take it's the ideal generated by p squared, and but then you don't have all the topology uniform elements. Um, but in some sense, this is as bad as it gets. In fact, the collection of all such a zeros and the collection of all such i's they form uh, filtered collections, and a third is actually uh, actually a filtered column of all possible such a zeros. And uh, also I, uh, sorry. And similarly, uh, these topological near elements, these elements is also the filter element of all choices of the ideal of definition and rings of definition of A of C. Yeah. All right, this was part uh, one of the definition to deal with a little bit of discussion. Uh, part two was that. Oh, no. Uh, sorry. There, there, there is no. I wanted to define. I want to say that if I also have a ring of integral elements, then I can define an A plus, but uh, it's kind of weak use because. Uh, sorry. Uh, Okay, so uh, when we're learning the theory uh, at expressions, so in number of or so, um, I th at first I think it's extremely hard to appreciate the significance of this ring of integral elements A plus. It, it, it is somewhat necessary for Huber to set up a theory, but it's kind of hard to feel why it's necessary. Um, and uh, and, but it actually turns out that uh, uh, the theory that we develop using the solid modules gives you a very good understanding of what it actually does. And namely, it precisely uh, uh, matches. Oh, all right, okay, here's an example. Um, I mean, Near John T. Uh, actually, there are several possible rings of integral elements. I mean, just a discrete ring. In this case, the ring of integral elements is just some integrated closed subring. Uh, for example, you could take just the instead of the John T. Or you could take the full thing. <laughs> And in our theory, we'll summon uses and associate to this an analytic ring with the of modules. It's somehow only complete with respect to V. And to this, you will associate um, the relative theory. And so the role that this A plus will play is precisely the one of singling out which modules uh, to be considered as complete. All right, so so maybe I should uh, give this uh, 
definition of analytic race. Uh, Uh, by the way, um, sorry, maybe I can make this from our uh, notation. Um, Uber uses a single letter A uh, to denote the Uber pair uh, consisting of some uh, topological ring and the ring of integral elements. <clears throat> and uh, we will follow in. We will follow the conversation. Uh, so also when I discuss analytic rings, I want to use single letters to denote my analytic rings, but then they will have an, an underlying well, condensed ring in that setting. And we needed some symbol to denote that underlying condensed ring, and we didn't come out with anything good. So we chose to just follow Hoover's lead. <clears throat> okay, so... Uh, okay. Let's say A, Triangle. Uh, it's now some light condensed ring. And then I want to say, <clears throat> what is an analytic ring structure on this thing? So, what is an allowed class of complete modules? Um, okay. So, here's the definition. It's equivalent to the one that Dustin gave in the first lecture, but presented from a slightly more elementary perspective. Uh, so it's a full subcategory. Um, that I would call the A modules. Full subcategory of the condensing. Implicitly nice. Um, <laughs> so this is a condensed to be in group and together with a map from uh, the tender product and uh, that's like being on. Um, the data was just said, and now I will make a lot of conditions on this. Uh, but it are those conditions uh, that we had already seen before uh, twice. Like twice we stated that like solid being groups and the solid to the team modules, that they have a lot of nice properties and it was a long, long list. Um, and sometimes because we don't want to save this list all this time, we didn't make this definition. Um, uh, so first of all, it should be in a DN subtrading. 
So it's the same on the kernels and co-kernels. Uh, but it's also stable, in fact, under all limits and covalents. Um, all extensions, so if you have an extension of two complete cards, it should also be complete. Uh, Um, then there is a slightly crazy condition uh, that you want to check it's also stable under all xi from some n xi over a triangle um, where n is anything uh, any condensed a triangle model Uh, yep. Um, we we're looking something. Um, and contains pages. So we want uh, the module itself. <clears throat> Dustin, did I lose something? I don't think so. <laughs> so, uh, can I speak? Yes. Oh. Okay, uh, does it imply, maybe you can, I can prove from this in some way. So, for example, does it imply that it is a growth in the category where the condition that uh, I allude to is the existence of a set of generators. This is automatic under these conditions. Yes, yes, yes. Did you hear his answer real quick? What? He said yes. He said yes? Yes. Ah, this is a... Uh, ah. And uh, does it imply that the X groups in the subcategory is the same as the X in the full or the... Oh, no, uh... Yes, I don't. I don't know what he said, but the answer is yes. Yeah, I know the answer is yes, but he didn't hear the. I mean, in this presentation, okay. it's okay. Right. So the, the drive completion might not say degree zero. So if you really phrase it in fully the billion level, you have to be slightly careful when you say that, right? Oh, because it need not be the case that, like in here, in the second, I will define the derived category of A modules, and it's not the derived category of the being category in general. It's not. No. Does he hear what I say? Uh, yes, I hear what you say. <laughs> so uh, you said that the derived category. Yes. So in a second, I will define a certain triangulated category or stable infinity or whatever um, as a full subcategory of condensed the derived category of those things. Yes. More, which is the correct one. But in general, it will not be the same thing as the derived category of this being category, I don't think. Ah, so you in this case you you have a, a you you in this case when you have this full subcategory you say that you have a derived category, which is not the derived category of this subcategory. Yes. This ah. is the heart of a T structure. Ah, this is how you have yeah. those whose cohomology groups are in this. So yeah, it doesn't yeah, imply yeah. that the X are the same. Right, 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 right. So right. it doesn't imply. Right. Right. Does not, yes. and sometimes it does. Sometimes yeah. it is true, yeah, but not in general. Yeah, like in most right. practical cases, it will end up being true. All this generally, no. Okay. Okay, so I can press that. Yeah, you press that. Yeah. Um. Uh. No, Gamma put me. Uh. Make me confused. So, uh, so I want to claim that there is an automatically left that's on to this inclusion. Uh, Dustin, do I really need, need something for this? No, I think that's fine. So what's the argument again for this? Well, I mean, it's again this general principle. Uh, 
I, th I think it's not quite trivial, but I think it's a general principle that if you have a presentable category and a full subcategory closed under limits and sufficiently filtered co-limits, in this case, all filtered co-limits, then, um, then the inclusion has a left of joint. So there's a very related statement that involves this uh, set theoretic nonsense, this full thinker principle, but I think there you don't have some limits, right? Yeah, or no, well, it's something, or maybe you don't have the sufficiently filtered co-limits for something. I, I believe that the statement that I just mentioned, which I believe you also mentioned at some point earlier, is just a, a fact in ZFC. Right. If not, then just assume that there is a left to join. Okay. <laughs> what is the fact that there is? It, it's like if you have a, a presentable category and then you have a full subcategory closed under all limits and under all sufficiently filtered co-limits. Uh, then the inclusion has a left adjoint. And the category is presentable? Yes. The big category, no, the big category, only the big category has to be presentable. The small one will automatically be. Yeah, but that's... it is not clear from the stability that it has enough the set of generators. I mean, the... No, that's right. That's It's, it's, it's a non-trivial claim. Yeah. It's a non-trivial yeah. claim, which is true in, in, and what was this Bopenka? I mean, there's an X-axis that implies something here? Or... It, 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 I think it maybe implies you can leave out the sufficiently filtered co-limits or something. I, don't quote me. Don't quote me. Yeah. Um, right. Um, okay. End of definition. Um, uh, right. So... Okay, so 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 first I want to explain some general structures of this. Um, so uh, first on the idea level, so uh, the claim is that uh, so there exists the left adjoint between inclusions. Uh, that I will write as uh, sending model M to the base change from A triangle to A. Um, uh, so, so mod A right now is just purely intentional, but uh, I will think of it as the modules over this analytic ring that I call A. Um, and so, uh, it's such a basic sentence function. Uh, the kernel of the functor to the Tenbo ideal and mod A acquires a unique symmetric neural structure. Uh, making uh, the base change as uh, a model function. Um, all right, uh, let's uh, sketch the proof. Um, so we already discussed the question of the systems of the left adjoint. I, you think it's formal nonsense? If it's not, then just make it part of the definition. Okay. Um, now the question is about uh, that this is a tensor ideal. So what does it mean to be a tensor ideal? So the, so the left adjoint factor is definitely the sum that commutes all co-limits. Um, uh, so to show the tensor ideal, I have to show that if I have something in the kernel and the tensor is anything, then uh, it's still in the kernel. So assume n is a triangle module, a triangle module uh, such that 
and then the stage triangle is zero. Meaning it has no maps to any A module. And see any condensate modules? Um, then we want to show um I take the standard product then I say the same. Okay, it's zero. <clears throat> uh so this means that for all else in mod A. Um, so the home from N center and the center product into L is zero. It's not this, what this function is by definition, it's left to join. Um, but now uh, using center home injunction, this here is also the home uh, from, from M into the internal home. Uh, from N to L. But we assume that this guy is still complete uh, by functions. This was one of these functions that is stable under all, all internal likes, in particular internal homes. Uh, <clears throat> but now, if this is a mod A, then again, because, well, that's, I mean, this precisely the condition, right? So I can also write this at um, in mod A on the base change. Uh, but this guy is here. Uh, uh, this make more structure. So, uh, uh, so the tender product on A uh, has to be given by uh, taking the tender product. In uh, of C, just regard them as condensed A modules and then competing again. <clears throat> uh, the question is whether this uh, this makes a function of symmetric monoidal. Um, and uh, again, so to check uh, for all M and N. I can first tender and then compete. Uh, or I can first compete both of them. Um, 
the right as a standard product, where this was by definition, okay, now it looks really ugly, uh, but okay, it's only, only it's a very interesting when you first set up the series, I think, uh, to disambiguate uh, all these things. <clears throat> um, but the point is just that, uh, Um, this function here, uh, uh, this localization, it's about, it's, the kernel of this is a tensor ideal. And so, uh, uh, right. I think you don't use the kernel, but you just repeat the same time yeah. of the type of argument, homing this to to something in the in the subcategory and and using internal. I, I did this in the solid case, and you just do the same arguments, the same arguments in the solid case. Let me not try to do this again. <laughs> yes, actually, uh, I realized that on the ideal level, the better thing. To say would have been that if I have a map which is turned into an isomorphism under A, uh, under, under this localization, then also if I tend to this map with anything else, it also becomes an isomorphism. And then the which follows from the same argument as, as, as this one, really. Uh, and then the point is that, for example, I have this map from N to its completion, which becomes an isomorphism after localization because it's an unimportant operation. And so if I tend to this with N, someone the same space through it. So this is some structure you automatically have in analytic ring. So there's a category of modules, uh, some kind of localization of the category of condensed uh, modules over the underlying ring, and it requires a tensor product. Um, and now we pass through the derived categories. Uh, Let me not just say that A in an analytic ring structure. On an underlying light condensing A triangle. Um, then I'm defining the derived category of A modules. So we full subcategory of the drive category of condensed a triangle modules. Uh, the full subcategory is such that for all i in Z, uh, subcategory. Of all, let me still just call them M. So, a complex of modules. Um, the cohomology group. Oh, come on. Um, let me think homologically, thanks for years. Um, uh, all the homology groups. Line with something. Yeah. The time to be this.
And then, then, then okay, so here, here's already the warning. Uh, uh, so there is a natural comparison function. Uh, from the derived family of mod A to T of A, uh, but it's not always an equivalent. And in essentially all, I mean, basically, yeah, all cases I'm aware of, it will come out to be an equivalence, uh, but it's just not a general effect. Um, uh, but yeah, so the good thing to be able to focus on is the thing that we simply call D of A. <laughs> and so the, the previous proposition has, uh, an analog of the direct double. Um, so, uh, P of A, sort of this cross a triangle, the triangle is a subcategory. So, I mean, probably in one or two lectures, we will probably switch to the infinity peak categorical language, um, where we would say stable infinity category instead. Uh, for now, it's not really required, so let me just phrase it in more classical terms. Um, uh, stable under all, so again, in stable infinity case, we could say stable under all limits and co limits, but general limits and co limits are not well behaved if you work with strangulated categories. But you can say something equivalent in that stable under all direct sums and all products. Um, which are well behaved and do what they're supposed to do. Um, uh, what I'm trying to say. Um, Um, the inclusion again has a left adjoint. Mm -hmm. Um, that I will call uh, the derived center product from A set to A. And again, this has the property that if you have something that becomes an isomorphism here, then if you tend it with anything else, uh, it's still the same. And because this is now a triangular category, you can actually phrase this equivalent in terms of the kernel. But so if you have something in the kernel of this, uh, then you tend it with something saved in the kernel. So the kernel is a tender idea. And then again, this in the tensor product here induces the tensor product. Yeah. So if if one wants to to do the previous type of argument for this fact, then uh, one lends into the question of whether the of course there is internal ohm in the full derived category by unbounded and so on. But is it the question is whether if you have internal ohm from anything to something in D of A, then it lies in D of A. All right. And this is not because of unboundedness. I don't know. Of course, if you have a bounded complex, you have a, a spectral sequence. I mean, 
you still have to, to, to work with that. Here you have unbounded in both directions. I can see in one direction you have inverse well, the, limit. The toolbox of light condensing is still replete. So if you, some of the drive category is left complete. And so I think you can control, uh, control the question. Okay, let, let, let me do this in a second when I come to the proof. Uh, so the product. Uh, making um, your own face change. Like it's not All right. Um, uh, yeah, so, so first of all, triangulated. Um, <clears throat> so here you, you have, I don't know, M prime to M, to M double prime. And prime one, the prime one. And there's A modules. <clears throat> and let's assume two of them, and by shifting, it doesn't matter which two, uh, are in B of A. Then we want to show that M is also in B of A. We have to show M is also in B of A. But for this, we just look at the long effect sequence. So we have HM of M prime, and then we have H plus one of the double prime here. And these are A. So if I uh, have some quotient here, uh, and I'm from kernel, kernel here, right? And so for example, the kernel of the thing, which is uh, of metal A modules, is a quotient of metal of A modules. So these are both A modules, and then this one is an extension, right? So here we use stability under kernels and quotients, and then we use stability on extensions. No, I think standing here actually realized. Okay, so uh, it will be on the direct sums reduced to the H i's. Uh, and now I'm standing here actually realized that for stability in the product. Uh, Countable ones, they definitely reduce to HI. Uh, and then the uncountable ones, that was okay when, back when we were working the full condensed setting. Uh, and in preparing the lecture, I overlooked that 
there might be an argument to do here. Dustin, should I just assume that there is a left on the level of the right categories or? I'm sorry, I was busy with the chat. What What's going on? <laughs> uh, Why is it stable under all products? Why is what stable under all products? The top category of complete ones. Oh, it, oh, all products. Oh, instead of just countable products. All right. Oh. Ooh. How all products, all products exist, but is it exact in your category? Yeah, this is a problem. The problem is that like in life and then being all products are not exact. Yeah, this uh, is a problem. Okay. We'll have to think about this. Uh, chip, chip, chip. I, not an actual issue in some sense, but I screwed up the definition. So we should ask uh, for the existence of a left adorn. I mean, that, Dustin did in the first lecture, and I just threw it up and I prepared your lectures. Uh, uh, for existence of a left adorn, to this inclusion. Uh, and the definition of an Arbitrary parts are definitely okay once we admit the left adjoint. Because then the right adjoint is going to go with it. <clears throat> um, sorry. Uh, All right. Um, so now I made uh, this next thing actually part of the definition that the left adjoint exists. Uh, so the current was a tensor ideal. So let's say M uh, is uh, it's complete and then if any concept. Um, no, sorry, uh, what do I want to show? And isn't the kernel. <laughs> and then if anything, um, then you have to show that for all the ones that are complete, um, some of the last page of condensed they find the from and tender and without zero. Uh, and as uh, so first of all, uh, because uh, light condensed sets are what's known as a repeat, so first, <clears throat> this means that countable limits of surjections are surjections. Uh, 
notion that was introduced in my paper, the slug of butt on the Proitas side. Um, and one thing you showed there is that this implies that uh, any such, anything, sorry, for all, I don't know. I didn't use the letter K, right? So for any K, which is, I don't know, for example, condensed in triangle module, um, K maps isomorphically to the derived limit of its truncations in degrees at most n to some kind of positive of limit. So in usual, in the usual graph can be in groups. I mean, it's somewhat true, right? I mean, if it's when you truncate it to some degree and then just well, take the limit of these things, you're somewhat stabilizing to the correct answer. In general, that's so an issue because you're taking a countable limit here. In general, countable limits of the rough category are nasty thing, but <laughs> under this assumption, uh, you can control them. Um, so this means that I can certainly assume that L is bounded here, right? Um, <clears throat> what I need. So first of all, um, <clears throat> I need to show this. I can again use tender homage junction, and uh, I assume that M has trivial completion, so it's enough. It suffices to show that the internal R hom and condense a triangle modules from and so oh, sorry, it's not there, it's just it's, 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 because then you can rewrite this as a home from N into this guy. <clears throat> but I assume that N has trivial completion, so it doesn't have to anything here. Today. Okay, so this I want to redu reduce to the BN level where I kind of had the statement that I've had something in mod A and some anything, then all the internal X on mod A. Uh, the issue though, as uh, Gabor already pointed out, is that here we need to ask this condition for all possibly unbounded complexes. Uh, that's why I mentioned this fact, so this at least allows us to assume that L uh, here is, um, so we can assume L is in uh, E minus. Uh, is this goes to the right? Um, because also, all the truncations, they are still in D of A, but because the condition was just on the um, On the other hand, N can be written as a co limit uh, of the truncations to the left. I mean, this is always true that there's a co limit of the truncations in the region. Let's equal to minus n. Uh, this is much easier because co limits reduce the direct sums, these are always good. Huh? Um, and somewhat, somewhat similar, you can pull the co limit here out into a limit. And because we know that this is stable at least under countable products, uh, I can also assume that n is in d minus. But I think now I'm in business because. Once this is goes to the left and this goes to the right, everything reduces kind of to uh, the usual x. Um, okay. Yeah. 
or sequence. So some of L just being uh, degree zero and also N just being seven modules. <clears throat> And then it's precisely the conditions that the internal X from N to L is Okay. I think that's fine. <coughs> and once you have that, uh, the existence of the tender product is just the same formal diagram trace uh, that I didn't execute just previously, but did in the sort of case. So. All right, so another thing I should have really mentioned as part of the general thing, but didn't, and so let me uh, do this now, is that uh, this derived tender product, ah, sorry, uh, uh, yeah, so, uh, so D of A, uh, has a natural key structure. So making the inclusion TXF. And uh, the, the left to join is not in general TXF. Uh, as we've already seen the solid phase where solidification almost could turn something to the left. But if, uh, but still, uh, this derived phase change, it preserves as a connected part. There's the region. Uh, T structure uh, is that you have a notion of like things which uh, is that you have a notion of truncation of complexes, kind of. Uh, so that you have a notion of like truncation of complexes which certain non negative degrees complexes which are certain non positive degrees, and uh, they satisfy all the usual properties. <laughs> um, so, basically, yeah, sort of. Uh, we definitionally made this triangulated subcategory which is stable under all the truncations, right? So, uh, so this inclusion is T exact, and then it's just a completely general fact that if you have a left adjoint to a T exact function, then at least it preserves the connected part. Um, yeah, but... <laughs> so, 
I mean, okay. Check whether this maps to anything which is on, considered on the right, but this is a left adjoint, so you can compute the uh, morphisms in, in the larger category. But then this is still in this category. So I mean, that's really <laughs> Um, right. And so, uh, so in particular, you can talk about the heart and the heart, well, it's also definitionally, it's just what A and, uh, so if you take this and pass to the heart, this is, uh, this thing. And if you take the derived tensor product and parts to the heart. <laughs> so in this sense, the so derived and the VN level are compatible. And then there's the other question whether if you start here and just animate all these constructions of parts to the derived category, um, whether we recover those, but this is just not true in general, yeah. So in general, you don't even recover B of A, but even if you do, there are separate questions whether you recover, recover the product functors, and again, it's, it's not in general. Although, uh, I think if you do recover the product category, the edge on is also the correct one, just by functor reality of. But the tender product is a subject. But again, in practice, it is true. Yeah, that the C of A is just a broad category, and all these functions are the in the broad category. All right. Uh, with that out of the way, I'm almost done with my lecture, unfortunately. Um, so, okay. So back uh, to the comparison uh, with the super Um, so when we had a Hooper ring, we had these, these topological newport elements with power bonnet elements and so on. Um, and Dustin already gave a variant of this. Uh, first of all, Hooper rings themselves, or Hooper rings and pairs. Um, they map to condensed rings, of course, if all topological rings. Uh, this is actually fully traceable. Oh, yeah, all, all my ones are complete. Um, uh, but actually, uh, this lands in solid rings. Oh, I mean, all my rings I can use it. Uh, the ones where the underlying condenser being used is solid, um, right? Or maybe I should call this not a prime. Uh, <clears throat> uh, right. And so then Dustin already last time gave the definition that uh, if a triangle uh, is a solid ring, <clears throat> we can define a subset in double third and a third of the underlying. Right. <laughs> Where let me recall the definition. Uh, a double third was set of those elements. <clears throat> uh, in the underlying ring, such that the corresponding map from the to T uh, to a triangle setting T to F 
uh, factors that we will be talking. Um, there was some discussion about how much structure do you need to check here. Um, and so the condition was that it factors as condensed rings. It's actually enough to check that it factors as condensed modules over this, this one. Uh, and then it's literally saying that there is a sequence, a null sequence, one f, f squared and so on until zero. Uh, but together with a small condition that some f times the sequence of shift of the sequence to make it a module. Yeah. Okay. And so uh, if you apply this to the case where you're just solving a row, a row from a Huber ring, uh, then this is precisely the set of topology of the elements of the Huber ring. Okay. Um, okay. And um, how about the elements? Those were the points in those elements, such that <clears throat> when you regard a third as a zero to T module in this way, in the same way, that it actually becomes. <clears throat> And again, you can show that this is precisely the same thing as the uh, uh, worst condition of being power bonded. Um, and so then, uh, Dustin showed last time that this is always an integrally closed subturn. And this here is always an NGO. Radical up What was the definition of Western F? Uh, yeah, sorry. I mean, given F, I can again F is on T to my serve. Uh, let me write it again. So why on um, this method takes T to F, I can regard as a T to T module, and then the condition is followed. I'm already speaking some of the modules over the CH1T there, the modules over the closed unitus, because some of the dust motivated last time. Uh, so of this means that some on this algebra, the absolute of team should be at most one, so it should be two. Oh. You can also check it. OK, but now. Uh, I can also make the point. So assume A is an analytic ring structure. On a solid ring. <clears throat> a triangle. Then I can also define an A plus. I realized I didn't, didn't find an episode of NLC ring, so let me uh, do this in just a second. Um, such that the map from D to T to A, same map as always, T goes to S. Um, um, <clears throat> this map. Uh, in use of the map of analytic rigs. Uh, from the adjoint T solid, uh, so corresponding to solid the adjoint T modules. Uh, Yeah. 
So something that I should have said previously, uh, but forgot. Uh, uh, what I'm left with. A, which is a pair of uh, and then strings. <clears throat> um, and it's a scheduling of modules to some B, which similarly is a pair of and then string scheduling of modules. <clears throat> is a map uh, of underlying uh, and then strings, which has a property that if you Uses to restrict the uh, condensed B module to a condensed A module, uh, then the uh, big module stay complete. That's good. Yeah. So our restriction of theta is over here. So here you have the A module. Uh, and in this case, you can pass the letter joints. By the way, I mean, once this is true on the real level, the same statement is true on the level of the right categories because they can check it on the level of modules. And once you pass the left adjoints, the left adjoint to restrictions and extension of scalars, the left adjoint here is what I termed the base change functor. Uh, and so you get it also left adjoint here. Which is symmetric model. Which is cool. And if you want, you can compute it by first base changing. That's condensed modules and then completed. <clears throat> and you also get a derived tender. Uh, Okay, so the claim is that, uh, first of all, once you have such an analytic ring structure, you can get a datum as an Uber. Um, and so I will immediately check that this actually automatically satisfies this list of conditions that Uber puts on this ring into real elements. Um, uh, conversely, I will not, I'm not sure if I have time, I hope I can say it, uh, is wh whenever you have a ring of integral elements uh, in Hoover's theory, you can actually produce an analytic ring, which is somehow the initial one in some sense. Um, okay, so, uh, right. 
So first of all, I can also rewrite this as the following conditions. It's all those things such that <clears throat> one minus S times fifth, which is an endomorphism uh, from the derived state change from so P was this. So P, I recall, is always a speech based on the north system. <laughs> and we characterized being solid over zero on T by, well, being solid, uh, but this we already asked. And uh, that one minus T times shift of this is, is, is an isomorphism on this projective generator. So uh, what's actually equivalent to ask is that if I look at this thing here, uh, as an object in G of A, then this is an isomorphism. Why? So uh, if if <clears throat> if I admit such a map, then <clears throat> this already happens here. Like already here, one minus t times shift becomes uh, an automorphism uh, of this object, uh, like definitionally. But on the other hand, because this precisely characterizes the solid modules here, uh, you can also show the converse. Like if I want to show that I have such a map, I need to show that all complete modules here restrict the complete modules here, but being complete precisely meant that if I home one minus t times shift into there, it becomes a nice morphism. And so uh, we could just translate what this is going to So basically, we are, we are like whenever you have any element of your underlying ring, uh, you can ask this condition that uh, one minus f times shift becomes an isomorphism of p, and this will define for you an analytic ring structure by this general. Yeah, basically, you can, whenever you have an endomorphism of your compact projective object p, uh, declaring that this should be an isomorphism always defines an analytic ring structure. So you can take any any subset of priori of this ring and ask this type of conditions. Uh, <clears throat> so I, I want to ask a question I just asked yes. Dustin, but I, it's not completely clear. So since you define the notion of map of analytic ring just in terms of modules, so if you do this, you instead of just the derived uh, tensor L, you send to, so the, this P tensor L means that you take the tensor product and you apply the left adjoint in the derived sense. But you can just take the tensor product and apply the left adjoint on modules. Uh, and that, so this is what does, this means P tensor ZA without the L, I suppose. But then, so to check this condition, you get what I said. So if you, you try to, to check the, the induced map of analytic ring, you can translate to, to this kind of statement, but with this functor on modules. But then it probably it's equivalent to what you have written if you think about it, but uh, in the derived way. But I just want to confirm that the two versions are equivalent. It's the oh, yes, one. Yes, right, because you can actually detect analytic ring structures on the level of modules. It's enough to check it on the underlying, uh, on the Indian level. That is also true, yeah? Okay, so it's equivalent. It's, it's equivalent. It seems. Yeah. Um, I'm going to use a small elementary. Uh, uh, yeah. So with a, with a drive one, I would be more confident, but I think the argument you sketched is also true. So, yeah. Um, uh, Right. So the point is that uh, this satisfies basically all the this this subset also automatically uh, satisfies the conditions of the foot. So it's always uh, contains the topological nilpotent elements, which are always an open subset in Huber series. In particular, this open uh, when we come from Hubery, um, it's always containing the power bounded elements, and it's always an integrally closed subring.
Um, so why is that? So, well, if f is an a double third, then we actually get a melting d power series t. Uh, so a. <clears throat> uh, but um, that's almost. Yeah. If I have a module that's actually Z power series T module, we call it Z. Then it's automatically. Uh, I mean, yeah. Peter, actually, I mean, this proof is just exactly the same. As... Yes, it's exactly the same as last time. Just just... Because all, all I used was arguments about modules being solid over one, implying they're solid over another, and so on. Yes. Let me just yeah. say it again. Uh, okay. Um, so, okay, so these are actually all there, but this means that whenever I have a, a module here over over A, so in particular, it becomes a module here, which is everything was solid, so it must be an underlying solid ring. Um, uh, and so it must be solid over the on G. Uh, I should have said solid. <clears throat> um, if n is an a plus, uh, then I get a map from zero joint to be solid to a. Uh, but in particular, this means that a the underlying condensing, which we always assume is a complete module, uh, by restriction becomes a solid to be joint to one. So F is an A circle. Um, right, so this is the proof the inclusions up there. And uh, there's engineering inquiry for suffering. That's the same argument uh, as in the same place. So in fact, yeah, so the argument that Dustin gave there was already talking in some sense, not just about a triangle, but about any module. Uh, and so if you just run his argument, you see this is what he actually proved. Um, okay, so, right. <clears throat> Thus, for hoovering a triangle, I have the solid analytic ring structure, solid analytic ring structure one which lives over solid V. <clears throat> and Hoover uh, considered this notion of the rings as integral. And I just gave you a recipe here 
that was taking some such an electric ring structure here and produced a ring of integral elements A plus and here. <clears throat> and it's actually functorial. So you can actually show that <clears throat> uh, one analytic ring structure is contained as uh, uh, let me say that. Yeah, I mean, if you have analytic rings, then you get an inclusion of the uh, elements. And uh, this actually has a left joint, I assume. Um, So whenever I have a ring of integrals, I can produce uh, an analytic ring structure. Do you want to be the presentation of solid? Uh, sorry, yes, uh, maybe. Uh, so it's solid, but it admits a necessary unique. Uh, Map uh, from this solid. Okay. Where this solid is uh, like Z and so on. <laughs> I mean, it's unique because the map of rings is unique, and then it's just a condition. It's just a condition that all the A modules are actually solved. Um, and the different way to phrase this is to ask that one minus fifth has an endomorphism of key tensor Z A to the maximum. Drop on rug, doesn't matter. Um, uh, all right, so I, I, I wanted to say that it has left the joint. Uh, so if I had a Hoover pair, uh, then I can send this to an analytic ring A. Uh, is associated with this number here, where mod A are by definition all those condensed modules over the underlying ring, such that <clears throat> for all F and A plus, uh, when I take internal home from P into M, I have some IF1 minus F times shift acting on that, and that is a message. And because some of this, such a classes are always integrally closed, it's actually enough to ask for some kind of generating set. So whenever you have 
the subset of A plus that generates it as an open engine for it goes up or the ring of integral elements, then it's enough to check it for uh, the subset. So usually there's just one or two elements or something like this where you really have to check this <laughs> <laughs> so it's the same thing as those modules and such that only for those two elements uh one is extension. Uh, so yeah, so to connect this back to the beginning, so for example, like D comma Z is a Hoover pair, and this is just call it Z modules. Um, if I take Z to T, call it uh, that's all the pair. So if I only put Z here, then I'm only asking that some are solid over Z. So I take all T H on T modules and solid Z modules. But then when I take T H on T and T on T solid, then this becomes the relative solid. And then if it's out of time, so let me just state one last proposition. So when you start with the Hoover pair, uh, and then go to uh, then if I go back, then this actually maps back to A plus. Uh, so if I, right, so I have an analytic ring and then I can take its, so I can take this, this thing here and take its plus ring. So this is actually a plus. If we will play, so this left of joint functor is actually faceful. Um, From uh, Uber, okay. into into all energy rings, but they also And yeah, I mean, really still quite struck by how how closely uh, the series of solid analytic rings really matches Hoover's classical series. So if you restrict to uh, analytic rings where it's, you only ask, uh, allow yourself to put conditions that one minus some element times shift operator on P becomes an isomorphism, then you're precisely getting uh, those analytic ring structures that are induced by rings of integral elements in Hoover's sense. So which is kind of very strong a posteriori motivation for, for, for this definition of being in the All right, I should stop.